Ronnie. Got a new name yesterday. Ramon. 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 Yeah. And uh, and Kyle Kelly. Uh, these two boys are from our tribe too, and uh, you know, and uh, uh, I exercised their gift, and I'm gonna let them speak a little bit, and uh, because uh, I tell you what, uh, I'm, I'm glad that the Lord saved them and changed their life. But also, we thank the Lord for Doug that goes out to these tribes and get this testimony of what Jesus is doing. That's right. And, it, and that's amazing ministry. That's how we met. I mean, uh, we met in uh, Red Lake, Minnesota. You know, and uh, I just enjoyed the family, having a great time, a great breakfast, and a uh, Latino yesterday. We had a great time with them. Uh, just having a great time here. I say thank you. Well, don't, but don't. In our language, we say, I do see Jesus, I would do leap. Means, means I'm hungry for Jesus. Let's eat. It's star hunt. It's star hunt. Let us eat. But I'm going to call them up, Kyle and Ronnie. And also, uh, Little Feather's got something to share, too, a little bit. You know, we're glad to be here. And uh, thank you all so much, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, and uh, just come on up. These boys, uh, God put in my hand, and they've been traveling with me. They were in the jailhouses. They didn't believe in the Lord. And uh, I'm glad the Lord saved them. Discipleship and training is very important, and I'm proud of these boys. And, uh, you know, and, uh, Doug, thank you. Thank you so much. Really enjoying it, you know, and it's good to see Doug again. We were, last time I said, we were in Wounded Knee in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. <laughs> and he, he preached to the Lakotas there, but he filled their testimony, too. So keep him in prayer, because of that ministry and that connection, it's amazing how the Lord used him in a mighty way. Because other tribes need to hear what Jesus is doing. That he's the only way. Amen. Let's give these two boys a big hand. God bless you. First of all, I like to You're on. First of all, I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be here. Blessing just to wake up as quick as possible. My name is Ronnie Leach. I'm half Caucasian. I'm half Cherokee Indian. Uh, I started drugs, alcohol. Marijuana, both pipe about age 12. Um, I've known Kyle Kelly all my life, ever since preschool. He's been like this. Uh, I'm going to tell my testimony. About six years ago, when we was heading to work, me and Kyle worked at the same place, we working at the same one, we was living with the way at the same time. And we was heading to work five o'clock in the morning, super dark, it was super dark in the morning, and the beat truck comes to the midway. We we'll stop at a soft lap. I look right, I look left, nobody. The beat truck's still driving. When the light turns green, I take a left, the beat truck has his flashy lights on. I was thinking, you know, in my little town, we used to just have a flat when we broke down all the time. So I come around the beat truck, it looks like a mangled dog. We go on to work. Later on, probably about two hours, it was a man that had on the road. I've been fighting for it for long, so long. When I went to jail, they said I was going to have 10 years in prison. Two weeks later, they said I'm going six years in prison. I went four hours later, they called me and said I got four years probation. I said if I ever go to jail again, I would go for 10 years to prison. Well, I messed up. I started drinking again. I got drinking in jail. When I was in jail, I said, Lord, I know what I've done. I follow the flesh, Lord. Forgive me. I said, I know I'm going to prison once I get out. Once I got out of jail, I went to the courthouse. I said, Ron Leach, you got $666 to pay fees. I paid the $666. I didn't get the Lord stopped to go up there. He said, I got more for you. Once I paid that off, I said, all you have to do is finish this last year. From the middle of the 24th, you can get this as far as the last year. Only God, ever since I got out of prison, we've just been running. I've been holding on by this problem. That's what we have to do. Even when I felt down and I feel the weakness, I just hold on to this problem. Lord, carry me. Tell me the way. I love you. I trust you. Praise the Lord. Ever since I got out, we've been running. Running for the Lord. Mission after mission. Like I said, it's been two months and just 12 minutes. It's higher than what the Lord used to do. I'm just 
this is just a lesson. You know, life's hard if you have struggles. I try to do everything myself. I got divorced last year. I try to do it all myself. I can't let the Lord lead me. I can't let the Lord lead my life and I let him lead my heart. And everything's a blessing. I thank God for it. Thank you. I'm running leaves when I'm from Cherokee. I'm from uh, Little Oklahoma. I'm half white and half Cherokee. They look down on me because of that sometimes, especially in East and then. He said, You're not welcome here. But the Lord says, Whosoever, not just one color. Thank you. I would just like to say, you know, it's an honor to be here. Um, my name is Kyle Kelly. I'm from the Jalagi tribe. Uh, it's Cherokee. We just how you say it in Cherokee, Jalagi. And um, I was raised by my grandparents. They're full bloods. Um, my dad, he wasn't really in my life until I was about 16. My mom, she was on uh, drugs pretty bad, so she wasn't in my life either. But growing up, all I seen was uh, my role models were uh, gangsters, drug addicts, um, alcoholics. That's all I seen, so that's what full steps I followed. And I started drinking when I was 12. And I didn't think it was a problem at the time because I was just doing it on weekends. But... As I got older, it just started becoming a normal thing. And 9 o'clock in the morning, I'd be at the liquor store getting a fifth of a red lid. And by the time it closed that night, I'd be getting another one. And it just became a problem. And then I started popping pills, snorting them, smoking weed. Um, I never tried meth because that's what my mom was on. But, you know, that stuff's still bad, too, what I was doing. But I, I, I didn't think I had a problem. But uh, I, I was more or less just in denial. But... Uh, all my life, that's all I did, and, you know, I was just self-righteous, just all about me. I put my family last, I put everyone last, I was just worried about what was good for me. And until last year, you know, I had an encounter with the Lord. Before that, I was more or less just, I wouldn't really say atheist, but I didn't, I just believe we went life day by day. So I thought I didn't believe in nothing, and, you know, I was raised tradition, but... I didn't really believe in it either. I just thought it was all a hoax. Uh, but uh, as, I, as I was saying, uh, I kind of got humbled last year. I got uh, ended up with COVID. I was in the ICU for uh, three weeks. While I was in there, there was a nurse that would minister to me. And I, where I was raised by my grandparents, I mean, even if you don't believe in what someone's saying, you still show respect and listen to what they got to say. So that's what I did. And at first, you know, it was kind of going in one ear out the other. And then she started getting pretty deep. And, you know, everything she was saying was just touching my heart. And then uh, I still had pride, though, so I was just digging into that pride, not not, not just giving into it. Well, uh, about the second week I was in there, they came in there and they said, uh, your lungs are shutting down, your kidneys are looking bad, there's nothing we can really do for you unless you take this uh it was called like resezabir or something. It wasn't even legal yet. And I said, no, I ain't taking that. I said, if I'm going to die, I'm just going to die. But after the doctor, you know, I tried to act tough. But after the doctor left, you know, I started thinking, well, this nurse, what she's telling me is right. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to hell. So I started thinking on it and cried myself to sleep that night because I knew I didn't have Jesus in my heart. If I died, I was, I was going to go to hell. And, you know, it really scared me. And, uh, as I caught myself to sleep, uh, I just remember waking up in the morning and uh, there was a guy sitting at the foot of my bed. He was wearing just old uh, overalls and a maroon shirt, just like an old farm preacher. He's sitting there and he looks at me and uh, I look at him and he's like, I, he says, you don't know me, but I know you real well. And I kind of thought, like, man, I've never seen you in my life. And I was looking at him and I was like, where's your mask? He's like, I don't need that. <laughs> but uh, as he was talking to me, he said, uh, he said, uh, I'm a preacher, and, you know, t t tell me who he was and stuff. And, but when he said, you know, you don't know me, but I know you real well, I, I just thought it was odd. But as he started talking to me, he asked me about the Lord. He said, uh, can I ask you some questions about the Lord? I said, sure. He said, what do you know about the Lord? I said, not much. He said, well, what do you know? I said, well, from what the nurse told me, he died on the cross for our sins. He goes, okay. Then he said, what else? I said, well, if you look in his grave, he's not there. He rose on the third day. And, she, and, she said, or, and then he said, uh, can you confess that with your mouth and believe that in your heart? And, you know, the pride was still there. I said, I don't know. So I said, well, that's okay. You know, I'm going to pray with you. So I said, okay. And he said, anything you need to pray for? I said, man, 
I said that there's nothing they can do for me. I just, I just need some prayers, man, because, you know, I said, I, if I die, you know, I'm going to go to hell. He said, and then uh, he started praying for me. And as he prayed for me, he laid hands on me. And I just felt this warm feeling coming over my body that I'm, I never felt before. And before then, I was just having negative thoughts, like, you don't value your life, just lay here and die. You know, I didn't know what it was at the time, but now that I'm saved, I know it was the devil because the Lord doesn't give me anything negative. Now, as I was laying there, you know, just begin to pray, and this, this prayer was powerful. And I just felt this warm feeling take over my body, and after he got done, he started walking to the door, and I couldn't, I couldn't face him for some reason. I don't know if it was conviction or what, but as he got to the door, he turned around, and he had a smile and a look on his face that only, like, we would give our firstborn child. He just looked at me and said, you don't know this yet, but you're going to do great things for the Lord. And my first thought was, how? I'm not, I'm not even saved yet. Well, funny thing is, I, after after he left three days later, I was going home. The doctors were amazed that my kidneys were functioning right, my uh, oxygen level was good. But uh, now now that I'm saved, I know that was, uh, God sent one of his angels or something. He sent somebody by, and, some, and I'm glad the church prayed for me. But after that encounter, I tried to go to church. I tried to get saved, but... You know, I was still living in the world and still going to church, and you can't do that. You can't serve two masters. So I finally went to a revival. I went and uh, I gave my life to the Lord that night on March 31st of last year. And what was crazy is the whole time the preacher was preaching, it just felt like he was only talking to me. There was probably about 30 people in there, but I felt like the message was just at me. So when altar call came, I just felt like, like I had a magnet on my belt or something. Someone was just pulling me up there, so... I didn't, I didn't hesitate. I just went. I just I went and I left everything at Jesus' feet that night. All my problems, all my burdens. You know, when, when you finally get set free, that's to make you feel it. Because when I was out there lost, I was just looking to be loved. I joined gangs because I thought they loved me. They didn't love me. They just giving me drugs. They just giving me alcohol. That's not love. You know, you don't know what true love is until you experience Jesus in your heart. That is true love. You know, I thought I thought I had to do this and I do. Get yeah, no, all this route before Jesus would accept me. Now He wants you as you are, because He will He will work on your heart and He will change you. You got to be willing to let Him go. You got to take that first step. But I'm so glad that I was more or less humbled by that experience, and that's why one of my favorite verses in James chapter four, verse ten: "Humble yourself in the Spirit, of the Lord, and I shall lift you up." That's what we all need, you know. We need to be humble sometimes, and uh, I'm I'm just appreciative that. I was able to put that pride aside and finally accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And now that I did that, you know, I just got this hunger to go on and, you know, just keep going. Because uh, when I used to try to go to church, you know, I'd automatically get judged and all this. But I'm so glad that God looks at the heart instead of the outside. But He will change your heart and then He'll work on the outside to change you. You just got to be patient and let Him, you know, when He lays it on your heart, that's when it's time to, you know, fix what you put on your heart. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just so glad that I'm a child of God now because back when I was running around in the world, you know, even my own family members would say, oh, you're, gonna, you're nobody, you're just an alcoholic, you're not going to do this. But, you know, me and my brother, you know, now that we already got the Lord, we're, we're somebody to God. We're all somebody to God, you know. And He can use you in a mighty way. You just got to be willing to let Him, you know. Let Him order your steps. Don't do it on your own. Live in the Spirit, not in the flesh. You know, you just got to keep going strong. Because, uh, you know, after you get saved, it just doesn't stop there. Because once you let it stop, you're going to get comfortable and you're just going to become a, you know, a seat woman. And God doesn't want that. He wants us to be disciples, to go preach His Word. And that's what we got to do, you know. we got to keep going because, uh, you know, sometimes we want to treat faith like one of them houseplants back there. The faith ones that we just put in the corner and let it get dusty. You can't do that with our faith. you got to keep it strong by getting rooted in the Word. Pray, read your Bible, go to church. You know, you got to keep growing that faith. Get stronger. And uh, once you do that, you know, the devil has to flee when you encourage yourself in the Lord. He thinks he has power over you, but he lost a long time ago at Calvary. You know, the devil, the devil, he cannot, he not, cannot overcome you. The only thing he's going to try to do is discourage and distress you. That's all he can do. But when you're strong in the Lord, you can rebuke that. That's all you got to do, you know. Before I came in here, you know, he was kind of, the devil was trying to, try, trying to work on me, you know, about what I was going to say and this and that, but, you know. I just closed my eyes, prayed to the Lord. And in your name, I rebuke the devil. You know, my thoughts, my mind, my heart, anything. I said, I'm going to do your will.
whether he likes it or not, you know, if he gets mad, so what? <laughs> but, you know, I'm just glad to be here today, and, uh, you know, like he said, I, just, I knew him since preschool, we used to run around together, drink, ride, ride back road, but it's such an amazing feeling to have a brother that you used to do that with, but now you're telling people about Jesus. Instead of offering people beer and drugs, selling drugs, you're telling them about Jesus. And that's what that, that's what I really appreciate about and, uh, you know, we're just happy to be here. Thank y'all for this opportunity. And uh, God bless. Yeah. We're going to sing a testimony song to you. Uh, thank you, Lord, for our blessings on me. We're just going to sing a acapella. So. While the world looks upon me and I struggle alone. They say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing. Oh, how I wish they could see. So I thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a room up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I know why I'm not wealthy, and it's cold, and I know, and I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you, and that's all that matters, even though the world may not see, thank you, Lord. For your blessings on me, there's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
They call this white man's way. But this ain't white man's way. This is whosoever. And when they tell me they will bring white man with you to preach Jesus and try, show me. If you can't show me in the Bible what the word says, then it's false. I believe what Jesus said, whosoever, and he sends us. And I've been traveling a little better and eagle eye, and it's just been a blessing to go out to these tribes and show them that we're all from the same dirt pile. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I'm Chris, and I'm actually uh, I'm actually Wisconsin, as some of you know. I was actually born in La Crosse. But uh, I was actually truly born again when I was about 24 in the One Blood Tribe. Anybody know that tribe? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to read a little scripture here. And Jimmy's going to release something to you here. I mean, I know it's a little cold out there, but we are not the frozen chosen. All right. And uh, I'm gonna, the reading I'm going to read is found in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If you want to follow along, I'm going to read kind of quick. So it's not going to be a stop and start again. But it says, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. What you heard through these young men is a testimony of a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away, all things have become new. And we are born into a family, and it's, it's, a, it's a living, vibrant family. There's something that's going to happen to, to many of you in here today in what Jimmy releases. I've been in places, I've been in dark places with Jimmy, where the demons come right to our faces to try to hinder us from doing the work of God. I've been in prisons where the men are so hungry that the Spirit of God comes in that prison, and they don't, you see the Pentecostal fall and all that stuff? They're not just Pentecost to fall back. They all 18 guys face forward on the ground. You can't do that in a prison. That's not, you can't face something like that. That's the Spirit of God moving. So that's happening today here, and you're hearing. Verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil is, lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All right, that's in our hearts, that's in our sanctuaries. We come together, united in the things of God, but we take this into our homes. There's freedom God wants in your home, in your community, in your neighborhood. House to house ministries that Jimmy functions with in his area and all, among these tribes, it's we go breaking bread house to house. We bring in that liberty as we release the Spirit of God and what He carries in the temple. We are. So receive that today. There's something powerful yes. going to happen in your lives today. This, it's time to step forward. you got a young generation out there, lost, dying, going to hell. I was raised in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Anybody know Lightning Coast Beer? Hello? All right. Ten years old. My buddy's friend, my buddy's mother would buy us a pony kick to play poker in the basement. I was a full-on functional alcoholic by age ten. I had a girlfriend die, plow into a cement abundant at 15, broke every bone, died on the spot. Because it's accepted norm in some cultures, whether it's in a native culture or in a Caucasian European background culture. But is it accepted in the kingdom of God to walk one part in the world, one part not? You heard the testimony of these gentlemen. So my brother, I thank you for being honorable in the kingdom of God and walking forward and not stopping. He's been through so many trials. He was on his deathbed a, a year ago. But he walked out that next day and preached. <laughs> it wasn't his time. So God bless you all, and I'm, I'm excited to be here with you all. Bless you. But no, we're going to sing a few songs right quick. And, uh, and it's an honor and privilege to be here. God bless y'all. We love y'all. The song, I. Uh, I used to live life without Jesus, you know. I used to go by tradition and stuff, like little feather with me to, to, to tell you that we had an encounter with Jesus. And I didn't even go past eighth grade, and I worked hard labor 16 years as a chicken catcher. 
you know. I'm struggling at Doug says he's got six chickens. <laughs> I want to catch them. But I know Jay would get at me if I do that. And that's it. God bless y'all. I want to sing this song because there are tribes out there dying and going to hell. And they take traditions the way. They take medicine makes the way. Only Jesus is the way. They ain't no other way. But we're going to go after them. We're going to obey the Lord. We're going to some tribes up north this week. And we're going to preach Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. But I love this song. And thank you, Pastor. Thank you all. Number two, please. Let's give the Lord a big hand. God bless y'all. Oh my. 
my mind. What's on your mind, brother? They wonder why I'm not drinking. It's still painted this old town red. I tell them I'm serving Jesus now. And you man is dead. Make this go. You man, you see before you. They look a lot the same. I may wear the same clothes and have the same old name. But you look at on the outside, you can see inside it's there. You would see the brand new man, cause the old man is dead. Hey, let's stand this morning and thank the Lord for our salvation. Thank the Lord that's going to save our loved ones and heal our sick and heal this land. We have a testimony, don't we? Give the Lord a big praise, amen. Brother Rock, save our testimony. Now and then, I used to live such a wicked life. I had no hope inside. I was lost in darkness, searching for the light. And one night, I I gave my life to Jesus and showed man Praise God. And then you see before you they look a lot the same. I may wear the same clothes and have the same whole name, but you're looking on the outside, you can see inside the stage. You would see the brand new man. Cause the old man is dead. You're looking on the outside. You can see inside his dead. You would see the brand new man. Cause the old man. Praise God. Now here's the best part of the service. It's the word of God. We need to hear the word of God. Every day, every moment. But not just hear it, apply it to our life. They don't never fail. This is the promise. This is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Praise God. I was praying this morning, seeking the Lord. Told the Lord, lay it on us. The Lord would never fail, never let us down. We're answering the Lord, and we're going to these tribes. 
and tell them Jesus is the only way. But we're going in. He's anointed us. He's gifted us. Everybody has a calling today. Everybody has a harvest today. But this is our 12th mission. And after we get done with this mission, the two boys are going to do their own mission when we get back to Oklahoma. They go to the Choctaw tribe. And it's time for them to go out on their own. The Southwest have been training. And I'm blessed to have these youngs with me traveling. They're doing an awesome job. I'm proud of them. I'm their mama hen. I take care of them. I show them what the Lord says. The devil said I couldn't do it because I couldn't hardly read or write. And he passed eighth grade. 21 years, I'm still going. I'm still preaching the gospel. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I was praying and seeking the Lord and Oh, I love the scripture, the book of Psalms, 119, 105. But, but I'm going to pray, I'm going to read it, I'm going to pray. Let's give the Lord a big hand, amen? Yeah. Praise God, hallelujah. This is the house of God, it's not a funeral home. I pray, this building, it's a building, but we are the body of Christ. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. In 105, it says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise God. Father, we thank you again for the testimony special. Thank you for the church here, Lord. And Lord, just bless the pastor and everybody here, Doug, and everybody, Lord, and the team, Lord. I just pray your Holy Ghost move in a mighty way, Lord. And you're the, the tribe we're going to, Lord. That, Lord, you're, you're so powerful, tradition cannot come against it. Medicine men cannot come against it. Nobody cannot come against it. Lord, Paul said in Romans 8, 31, if you're forced, who can be against us? I thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. If not right now, just put me to the side. Speak for me. Holy Ghost, have your way with us all day long and every day. From this time, I said, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Said the word, it's lamp into my feet. It lights, it led light into my path. You probably wonder what this Bible's about. It's 200 years old. In the 1800s, Jason Lee, a missionary, a white man, went into the tribes there that were killing white people, that were killing each other. But God sent him to those tribes to preach the gospel. And I read the story. The pastor's got the story. It said he spoke to him four days. He sent other tribes to go tell other tribes to come. And he fed them small trout and all that. The Bible said the word story to it. It said he preached the gospel to them. They hated the gospel. They called this the white man's way. They didn't believe in this. But the power of the Holy Ghost took over on that fourth day. And the story says their heart melted. They laid their weapons down. And they repented and turned to Jesus and joined the church. This is the same Bible Jason Lee used. And we're using it today, 200 years later. And we're going out to the tribe and tell them Jesus is the way. Because you see at one time, Mr. Muskrat, fine bow, Hawaii fine bow. You see... You see, my, my feet, my steps used to go to tradition, used to go to medicine man, and they, they didn't go the Lord's way. But I praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited, little feather. I'm so excited, Pastor. Oh, Doug, I'm really excited. If I start dancing, don't think I'm crazy. It's just a Christian behavior. If I start slumping, don't think I'm crazy. It's just Christian behavior. Because I'm praising God today. This ain't my step. It's the step the Lord has ordered. And I get delighted. He gets delighted in my way. Praise God. That word is left to my feet. I'm no longer in the dark. I'm no longer in the tradition. I don't go to medicine man. His word lights up my path. Come on. Woo! The scriptures in the one of it says that I'm a stranger to the earth. Hide not the commandments from me. Yeah. Are we blessed that no matter what we face now, His word lights up our situation? Yes. 
Because when you believe in his word, no matter what, you see, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, but I thank the Lord for my elders, the bedridden that taught me the word of God. And I, and I tell you what, I have a degree through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've got a greatest teacher. It's the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I've come to praise my Lord. And we're going out to these trials in the name of Jesus and preach Jesus Christ. That Jesus is the only way. There's no other way. If there was another way, Jesus would die in vain at Calvary. But thank the Lord Jesus, there's hope for anybody. He can change any trial. I believe he's going to melt the hearts wherever we go. We're nothing without the Lord. We've been sent. His word is led to our path. No matter what, I've got victory in Jesus every day. Don't watch the White House or the governor or the mayor or the chief of the tribe. This is what's going to change the nation. It's the word of God. We're born again believers. No matter what, I thank the Lord for his word. It lights up my situation. I give you see Jesus of a duly. It's the heart. I'm hungry for Jesus. Let's eat. <laughs> said his word it's a light in my feet in my back wow was told that it would you see in our tribes our tribes got the average suicide is 13 a month in the tribes 11 12 year old alcoholics Alcoholics, all of these tribes, and they believe in the tradition that's going to save them. Medicine man's the way. But you see, only Jesus can deliver you. Only Jesus can save you. I had an encounter with Jesus the year 2000. I'd never been the same. I had some dark time. And I went, I went out to the tribes and all over the nation preaching Jesus Christ. Medicine man wanted to come kill me. But it didn't work because, you see, the Lord sent me. Nobody cannot come against Jesus when you show up his way. It's something about the word. You can speak the word, but are you living it? Are you applying it to your life? Are you getting rooted in the word of God? It's not about our way no more. It's not about our steps no more. It's about taking a step the Lord's way and doing it his way. And that's what we do in this tribe. We've seen the Lord change this tribe. I'm nothing without the Lord. Hawaii five volts, nothing without the Lord. I thank the Lord Jesus. I got victory no matter what. Discipleship and training. I'm working on the future. If the Lord calls me home one day, this ministry keeps going because these young boys on fire they've been talked about their feet went to the drug house their feet went to tradition they went to the county jail what happened to these boys they had an encounter with Jesus Christ and his blood washed their sins away they're born again believers now and they get rooted in the word of God you've seen it this morning what the Lord can do it shocked our tribe it shocked our town I tell you what, we need to show this nation who's powerful and who's real, and that's Jesus Christ. Praise God. Yeah. I didn't read in the scriptures about fear, worry, or stress. I just believe. That's all he says, I will. In the Old Testament, we can read about David's steps to the giant. Elijah's step to the prophets of Baal. We read about Abraham and Moses, Joshua, Joseph, Paul, Luke, and Mark. How the Lord, how the Lord stepped in. That's the same power today. He's never changed. He's still the same as yesterday, today, forever. This is the word of God. Yeah. We're going to tell this tribe that suicide's not the answer. 
Tradition's not the answer. I stood in the building one time. And the medicine man said, keep your eyes upon your warriors. Don't believe this white man's way. But I stood up with the power of the Holy Ghost. 400 in the building that hated the gospel. You see, they were against the gospel. It's just not natives. We have so many out there. Unbelief. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe he's coming one day. It's even in your family. It's even in your community. It's everywhere. The harvest is ready. I don't care if there was two of us here today. But the Bible says we're two or three gathered his name. We still can have church. Praise God. It's not about numbers. It's about how we show up. I stood up and I told them, go dig your warrior's grave up, you'll find your bones. But my warrior Jesus, go to his grave, you find it empty. Because he's alive today. Amen. I thank the Lord for saving me. I thank the Lord for helping me. He gets all the praise and all the glory. I got 15 grandbabies that look up to me. Praise God, these boys I'm teaching, that we're working with and teaching about the Lord's way. They've been a blessing. It's amazing. You see, Jesus is coming. We're living in the last days. Yeah. Amen. He's yeah. coming sooner than we believe. There's a harvest, you know. The question is, what are you doing outside the four walls? What kind of noise are you making about Jesus out there? What kind of noise are you making in your family, in your community? Because they're watching us. Oh, let them read Jesus. Oh, I tell you what, because I'm so glad that next week we're going to these tribes. And it's not going to be our step. They see the Lord ordered us that, which it's established. And he gets the light in our ways. Praise God. I believe he can change a whole tribe. I believe he can save everybody in this Because the woman at the well, she came at a certain time. She didn't know she was going to have an encounter with Jesus. She didn't know she was coming to two world, too well. Because you see, they have the tribe, the station, this world. They're drinking from a well that they'll thirst again. We are blessed today to drink from the well that will never thirst, will never hunger. Praise God. Hallelujah. How was short steps on the way to the church? How was your step coming through the door? I'm here to tell you, I can see you here, but does God see you there? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, the word, the word light is powerful. Amen. You see, I don't want to swim in the river of fear. I want to swim in the Holy Ghost flood. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What he did with this Bible, 200 year old Bible, he still can do today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We have a nation today rejecting Jesus Christ. He's trying to get their attention. He's trying to get their attention. And I'm so glad the Lord is coming one day. We're not of this world, we're passing through. I'm a stranger to the light of my path. I used to run with the world. I used to run with tradition. I used to turn to medicine men. But when I had an encounter with Jesus, like Saul had an encounter, Saul never been the same on that Damascus road. The Lord Jesus changed his life. He became Paul. It's amazing what the Lord can do with somebody. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that no matter what, he's with us. Thank you, Jesus, for saving 5 and changing my life because I'm here to tell you I'm a stranger to the world system now, but I belong to a different system, God's system now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This system doesn't shut down. It's still the same as it is today. I'll tell you the word of God. I'll get excited because we're hearing what the Lord's got to say today. He said, my words will light up your situation. But there's a condition to it. You must be obedient to the word of God. You must trust the Lord no matter what. Praise him in a storm no matter what. Because you got victory no matter what. Because those storms and trials that I went through, I am who I am today because of those trials. 
The Lord took me to school. He discipled, teach me. Thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. I thank the Lord. I'm excited to be here. I tell you what, this is the house of God. The power of the Holy Ghost. Let's flood this place. Let's flood this nation. Let's show the White House who's real. Let's show the White House who's powerful. Not the governor, but the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we've got victory in Jesus. Woo! <laughs> it's a lamp. And it says unto my feet, and a light. I'm on a rough trail. We're on a rough trail. We still have storms. We still have trials. You see, Satan's not after lost people. He's after us. And he would love to shut this big mouth up. Too bad he can't. Because my steps are ordered by the Lord. And it locks up my situation, no matter what, no matter what we face, no matter what we go through. The Lord hears our prayer. In Psalm 34, 15, his eyes upon the righteous, his ears are open to the cry. Praise God, we're children of God, and we're in his sight, and he takes care of his children. He's our provider. Aren't you glad you got joy today? Aren't you glad you got peace today? Not just today. Every day, the Lord, the word, his word is lent to my feet. And I light, and it lights up my path. We're headed to many trials this week. We're headed to preach Jesus Christ. I praise God that we're sent. And our, he's going to guide our step no matter what dark situation we're in. That we're here to preach Jesus Christ. That he's the only way. Because tradition didn't save me. Good works didn't save me. Singing didn't save me. It was Jesus Christ that saved me. See, see, salvation's a gift. You must choose life or choose death. Woo! 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 I'm letting the Holy Ghost do it do his work. <laughs> I don't even have to say nothing, the Holy Ghost moves in a mighty way. I feel the presence of the Lord. I laid hands on my leg this morning to cry out to Jesus. And I said, I'll still praise you no matter what. He touched my leg. Come on, come on. He touched my leg. I was late for breakfast. Five old never late for breakfast. <laughs> Because I was spending time with Jesus. Like Peter John did in Acts 4 13. Oh, what a demonstration the power of God in our steps. Amen. It's easy for us to praise Him when things are going fine, things are going great. But storms and trials come. We should praise Him even more because that's where we trust Him. That's where we have faith in Him no matter what. Jesus for us, who can be against us. Amen. No matter what, what I'm talking about, what kind of book are you? What do they read out there? What do they read in your family? Do they read Jesus Christ all day long? Praise God in his sight, Lord. You're not going to see us give up. You're not going to see us throw in the towel. You're not going to see the governor fear us. We're going to believe in you in your sight. We're going to praise you in your sight. And Lord, your ears are open. You're not going to hear me complain. You're not going to hear me crap around or anything. You're going to hear me calling on you and praising you and bringing it to you and trusting you no matter what. We're in the house of God. This is the house of God. And we are his children. Praise God. We thank the Lord that man what power is with us. Wow, he's in the midst, church, this morning. I feel the presence of the Lord, the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
If I start cutting loose, don't get scared. I guess it's the Holy Ghost moment. I want to have a Holy Ghost moment, not just on a Sunday church service. I want to have it every day of my life. When the storm comes, I'll still got victory. When we go to these tribes this week, we got victory all the way. Because we're going to preach Jesus Christ. Because the Lord's ordered our step to go to all nations and preach to the tribes. And tell them Jesus is the only way. Come on. Woo! Woo! Oh, my feels good. Maybe that's why we didn't find rabbits on your property. Because the Lord said, You be the rabbit. You see? Said the word for it's a lamp. The word comes first. The Lord comes first. Amen. Amen. We have a nation today which wants to hear what the White House got to say. Wants to hear what the news people got to say. Somebody called me and said, "My friend, you better be careful. COVID's everywhere." I said, "Told Jesus." <laughs> Jesus said, I will. But what about our part? Do we believe his word? I can testify and look back many dark moments where his word light up my path, my situation. Where many tribes, and I believe they call this a white man's way. This is whosoever. Jesus died for all. So many tribes are trying to deal with suicide, alcohol, all the depression and these rest, and they're not turning to Jesus. They're not going to his word. This is what's going to change the tribes. Amen? I'm the original writer of the Trail of Tears, 1984. I rode a bike from Turkey, North Carolina, all the way to Oklahoma, and I followed the Trail of Tears and learned the history of the trail, how our ancestors were slaughtered and killed and everything. And that Andrew Jackson and the white man, the soldier, how they killed many babies on the trail. That trail made me angry. It made me upset. I hated every white person. But something happened when I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. The Bible says any man in Christ is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, things become new. Now I'm going back to the trail and I'm preaching Jesus Christ. And I'm preaching on a trail. He walked to Calvary. If he wasn't for his step to Calvary, there wouldn't be no hope today. The tribes need to know that Jesus is the only way. And it's going to be demonstrated this week by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look out, tribes. Here we come in the name of Jesus. He used me and Doug in a mighty way, Pine Ridge. Wounded in at a place of praise, God. We had a great time. But he's going to these tribes and getting testimonies. What Jesus is doing. Praise God, he's real today. I know y'all may not be sent out to the tribe, but you do have a harvest. I believe you can have a good problem here. I believe the Lord can pack this church. Amen. I filled in for one year at a church in Spivlin. And they gave me five dollars a week. Four was there, three years. But I believe what he said. And I said, we're going by faith. Two months later, 86 members and 56 kids. The creek right behind the church. I was taking eight a week baptizing in the name of Jesus. Baptism can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. Many tribes out there said, I want to be baptized. But you've got to turn to Jesus first. Turn to Jesus. Repent. Because Jesus is the only one can set you free. He's the only one can save you. He saved all of us for a reason. He saved me that I never thought I'd be doing. I thought I'd be a chicken catcher the rest of my life. Hard lady. 
But I thank the Lord for saving me and changing my life. I don't deserve this salvation, but 21 years, he's never failed, never let me down. We're the ones that fails the Lord. We're the one that comes short because we let things fear us. There's so much fear flowing through this nation. And they're feeding on fear through TV and the government. They fear this, 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 this virus and everything. But I'll never forget on my deathbed when they said it was over, but Jesus showed up and healed me. It's amazing off my deathbed went to church and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. I feel better today, stronger today. But no matter what situation I'm, I'm in, I can testify, you can testify, how the Lord light up your situation. Praise God. You see, we know a lot of lost friends and family members that's stiff necked and stubborn. The strongest medicine man came to the building to kill me. 400 in the building, they were against me. I was a traitor to Indian nation. Because the one white man did to the tribes in the past. Boarding school, cut their hair, made them wear clothes. But Jesus changed me. I walked in that building. And preached the gospel, and I seen the whole building cry out to Jesus. Their hearts melted. They got a hold of me the next day and said, The strongest medicine man wants to see you. He wants to come to his house. And I, when I got to his porch, he had a cup of coffee. And he said, I've come to kill you this week. When I walked in the building, my heart. No. All I want to do is drink coffee with you. You're the real McCoy. He said, it's hard. No. We was in North Carolina last night. Stood before all nations. And I did it. I said, Lord, use me like you do, Brother Jason. And I see him melt the heart. I'm excited this week, Lord, to all tribes. I see their heart get melted. Because this is the Bible, this is the gospel, this is the word of God, and it lacks every situation. We have too many today playing church. When you play church, it's not going to light up your situation. You see, we have the enemy who wants to pull us out of light. The things of the world, fear, and all that. We must hang on to Jesus. I'm anchored in Jesus Christ. Oh, you can't float away when you're truly saved, when you're anchored in Jesus. You can't wander away when you're anchored in Jesus. His word lights up my situation. I may not have steak on my table, but thank God for baloney. Thank God for my needs and everything. Thank God for my family, my brothers, sisters in Christ, my family. Now I get to meet new families today. Oh, we've been adopted by the blood of Jesus. We're all from the same dirt pile, but we're going to make a noise about Jesus. And you're going to go after your harvest. You're going to go where he's sending you. And you're going to preach Jesus Christ. We're all going to preach to God. We're working together. We've got the same boss man. The same boss man. Oh, the same Holy Ghost. And I tell you, it's time to scatter and go after the harvest. Whosoever it is, wherever you go, the Lord has sent you. And he's the one can change this nation. I have many natives today say, we worship God through evil. Jason Lee took the word. Without the word, there's no light. Because Jesus, his step to Calvary, is the reason we're saved today. And that's what's going to change all tribes. And we're headed to him. God is sending us. Me and Doug talked about this. We talked about it. We prayed about it. We prayed about it. And it was time to come. That's God is saying. We don't, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you for letting us come. And we don't. Thank you so much. 
Oh, I tell you what, may the Lord bless y'all. Thank you, my brothers and my sisters. And I tell you what, and, and pray for us because I know who can stop the suicide. I know who can save the alcoholic. I know who can come against tradition. It's the power of Jesus Christ. Praise God, hallelujah. Because a lot of them don't like to see our steps when we come around. A lot of them like, it's called conviction. They're seeing what they need to see and hearing what they need to hear. I can't tell you nothing else, but Jesus is the way. But it's been lighting up our situation. Amen. It's amazing, Doug, and, and Little Feather and Eagle I know that, that we're going to this tribe and they're saying that, you know what, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. We bring the word of God. It's what we're doing this week. We're obeying the Lord. And it's a list where we've been to a lot of tribes, 12 missions. We're excited to mission Oregon coming up and all that. Whenever it opens, we go to preach the gospel. But these boys, these young people, these two boys, that local town said, are you sure, Father, about these two? Are you sure? Are you, are you positive? I said, don't talk to me. Talk to him. He puts this all together. It's his puzzle. You see, that was the word from the Lord today. What are your places? You know, you know why we're saved today? Because somebody carried your name to the altar. Somebody stepped were ordered by the Lord and they prayed for our salvation. And we weren't even sitting in the church. We was out there in bondage, living wicked ways. But somebody walked that out and lift our name up to Jesus. Thank God for the grandmas. Thank God for the parents. Thank God for whoever prayed for our salvation. I thank the Lord for Aldi Muskrat for praying for her boy. She's in heaven, my mom and dad. But thank the Lord I get to see him again through Jesus Christ. Not through tradition, not through medicine, man, through Jesus Christ, his promise that I'll see my loved ones again. Maybe you have nothing to pray about. Come pray for these tribes we're going to up north in Minnesota, all over Red Lake and Cass Lake, Leech Lake. We're looking forward to going no matter what because God has said it. We're excited. Come on. We're excited. Oh, it's cold this way. <laughs> we don't have some slips and falls. <laughs> well, we got back up. <laughs> Same way with the Lord. He picks us back up when we slip or fall. Amen. See, today, we're not promised tomorrow. We need to seek the Lord. It is true, His Word, His Word is a lamp to our feet and a light. Lots of our path. We have many tribes turning to suicide, alcohol. Drugs, tradition, that Jesus is sending us. We're going out to no matter what. Please pray for us today. We need your prayer. We need your prayer. But we got to pray for each other. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we love y'all. I love everybody. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what. Today, we need the Lord every day. <clears throat> every day we need him. This nation is feared. We have so many who don't believe in Jesus Christ. So many tribes don't believe in Jesus Christ. God is sending us to many nations, many tribes. Billy Graham prophesied for our natives in the 70s that we're going to be the sleeping giants. We're going to take the land away from Satan in the name of Jesus. You're looking at sleeping jars and being a wolf. Walk up, risen power. That same spirit that raised him on that third day is that same spirit that's in us. All I know that the Lord is sending us. We're glad to be here. I thank the Lord. He answers our prayer. Let's all stand. This is a demonstration of what the Lord can do.
But we have so many, not just tribes, we have a nation that needs to be saved. We have a White House, a White House that's coming against the Word of God. We have so many coming against the Word of God. And we have so many don't come to church like they used to. Don't pray like they used to. Don't seek the Lord like they used to. What happened? You did run well, but who hindered you from obeying the truth? Paul told the Galatians 5 and 7. We can witness today so many not running like they used to. So many sent in churches today, not even there. This is the house of God. And one day Jesus Christ is coming. Who can you pray for today? Who name can you carry to Jesus today? We're praying. We're just not after trials. We're after whosoever. We're going out to all nations. But you're my family through the blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm your brother. I'm your brother. Yes, you're you're part of church and nation. <laughs> Amen. But go back in history, you see what the enemy's been doing, how he's been destroying our family, the family tree. You can go back way back. Not just natives, every family can go back and see what the enemy's been doing, how he's been destroying our family. Now, thank the Lord Jesus Christ that we serve the one who can change history. We serve the one who can save the family and pull the family together. It's sad to say families only gather today when somebody dies. He's in the midst. Let me put this all the way. Guys, we've got a soul or something. And Come on up, Brother Chris, little feather. We'll pray with you. You know, we've got a lot to pray about. Prayer is what changes for you. That's why we're saved today. That's why we're still today. Because they call it to Jesus. His ears were open. This community here, how many lost we have in this community? You know, Jesus is the only way. There's no other way. There's no other way. It's his word. Because when I was with the trials, 13 suicides. 13 suicides a month. Just think about it. You had 13 suicides here. I was it with this devastating. This community. Thank God for sending us. Tell him Jesus can save you and deliver you. But it takes prayer. New law. New law. Come on. Pray with me. Go seek the Lord about this tribe, about your family, about this community. Let's pray for the White House. Let's pray for the governors. Let's pray for everybody. The Lord can change this nation. It starts with their steps. Starts our steps to step forward no matter what. Jesus is coming. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's seek the Lord.